Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of today's GK. Let's begin with previous day's practice question. Question was, consider the following statements regarding fundamental duties in relation to the national flag of India. 1. It is a fundamental duty for every citizen of India to protect and respect the national flag. 2. The fundamental duty related to the national flag was added to the Indian constitution during its original framing in 1950. Which of the statement or statements given above is or are correct? 1 only, 2 only, both 1 and 2 or neither 1 nor 2. The correct answer is option A, 1 only. One of the fundamental duties of every citizen of India is to respect and protect the national flag. This emphasizes the importance of treating the national flag with honor and dignity. Hence, statement 1 is correct. The fundamental duties, including the one related to the national flag, were incorporated into the Indian constitution through the 42nd Amendment Act in 1976. Hence, statement 2 is not correct. The Indian national flag should be displayed in a proper manner according to the guidelines issued by the government. This includes ensuring that the flag is the correct size, color and protocol. The flag shouldn't be used for clothing, decoration or disrespectful purposes. Flown at half-mast as a mark of respect during the death of dignitaries. The Prevention of Insults to National Honor Act of 1971 protects the flag from insults. Therefore, option A is the correct answer. Now, let's begin today's session. First question is, in the context of Hawaiian Islands, which of the following is not correct regarding the Moi Island? It is the second largest of Hawaiian chain. It is also known as the Valley Isle. It contains a humpback whale sanctuary or it is a part of the Oceania. The correct answer is option D. It is a part of the Oceania. Recently, the wildfires have caused extensive damage on the island of Moi in Hawaii. Moi is a volcanic island located in Moi County, Hawaii, USA. It is the second largest island in the Hawaiian chain. It is also known as the Valley Isle due to its valley-like isthmus connecting east and west peninsulas. The island was formed by two volcanoes, Pukukui and Haleakala, giving it its unique geography. Moi country encompasses Moi, Kaholawi, Lanai and Molokai. These islands were once part of a larger landmass called Moi Nui. Tourism is a key economic driver thanks to attractions like beaches, waterfalls, the Kialia Pond National Wildlife Refuge and Halaikala National Park. The island is also home to a humpback whale sanctuary and aviator Charles A. Lindbergh is buried near Ohe O Gulch. Oceania is a collective name for the islands scattered throughout most of the Pacific Ocean. Moi is not part of the Oceania. Therefore, option D is the correct answer. Next question is consider the following statements regarding the Goa Liberation Movement. 1. Goa became Portuguese colony in 1510. 1. Tristão de Braganca Cunha is considered as the father of Goan nationalism. 3. The Operation Vijay, a military operation, was executed to annex Goa. How many of the statements given above is or are correct? Only one, only two, all three or none? The correct answer is option C, all three. Recently, the late activist Karnal Singh Isru was paid tribute who died in 1955 while participating in the Goa Liberation Movement. Goa became a Portuguese colony in 1510 after Admiral Afonso de Albuquerque defeated the forces of Yusuf Adil Shah, the Sultan of Bijapur. Hence, statement 1 is correct. Tristao de Braganca Kunha, considered the father of Goan nationalism, established the Goa National Congress in 1928 during the Indian National Congress session in Calcutta. Hence, statement 2 is correct. In 1955, Isru, a participant in the movement, joined a march towards Goa led by Sahodra Bhai Rai. Violence erupted as they entered Patra Devi village, resulting in casualties including Isru's death at age 25 due to a bullet wound. On December 18 and 19, 1961, Operation Vijay, a military operation, was executed to annex Goa. The resistance was minimal and an instrument of surrender was signed leading to Goa's incorporation into India on December 19, 1961. Hence, statement 3 is correct. Therefore, option C is the correct answer. Next question is, with reference to Indian environment, the mission life is associated with which of the following ministries of government of India? 
Ministry of Environment, Forest and Climate Change, Ministry of Renewable Energy, Ministry of Earth Sciences or Ministry of Science and Technology. The correct answer is option A, Ministry of Environment, Forest and Climate Change. Recently, the Prime Minister pointed out about Mission Life Initiative on the occasion of the 77th Independence Day. The Mission Life is an initiative under the Ministry of Environment, Forest and Climate Change. It is a global initiative by India to help the world in its fight against climate change. It leads to a sustainable way of life to achieve the sustainable development goals set by the UN. The idea of life was introduced by India during the 26th United Nations Climate Change Conference of the Parties in Glasgow in 2021. It aims to nudge individuals and communities to practice a lifestyle that is synchronous with nature and does not harm it. Therefore, option A is the correct answer. Next question is with reference to International Solar Alliance, consider the following statements. 1. It was launched at the United Nations Climate Change Conference in 2015. 2. It includes all the member countries of the United Nations. Which of the statement or statements given above is or are correct? 1 only, 2 only, both 1 and 2 or neither 1 nor 2. The correct answer is option A, 1 only. Recently, the Prime Minister emphasized upon the International Solar Alliance on the occasion of the 77th Independence Day. India and France launched the International Solar Alliance to boost solar energy in developing countries. It was launched at the United Nations Climate Change Conference in Paris in November 2015 by the Indian Prime Minister and French President. Hence, statement 1 is correct. Its secretariat is located in Gurugram, India. At the initial stage, the ISA was opened to membership of countries lying fully or partly between the tropics of Cancer and Capricorn. In 2018, the membership of ISA was opened for all the UN members. However, all the member countries of the UN are not its members. Hence, statement 2 is not correct. Therefore, option A is the correct answer. Next question is, in the context of Indian biodiversity, what is the IUCN status of red-headed vulture? Least concern, near threatened, vulnerable or critically endangered? The correct answer is option D, critically endangered. Recently, two critically endangered, four vulnerable and two endangered species were found during a bird survey at Corbett Tiger Reserve in Nanital. The red-headed vulture is one of the nine species of vulture which are found in India. It is also called the Asian King Vulture or Pondicherry Vulture. It was extensively found in India but its numbers drastically reduced after diclofenac poisoning. The IUCN status of red-headed vulture is critically endangered. The red-headed vulture prefers open country usually away from human habitation, well-wooded hills and dry deciduous forest with rivers. These species are distributed in India, Nepal, Bangladesh and Bhutan in Indian subcontinent. Therefore, option D is the correct answer. Next question is consider the following statements regarding the National Green Tribunal. 1. It was established under the National Green Tribunal Act 2010. 2. The Minister of Environment, Forest and Climate Change is the ex officio chairman of NGT. 3. Its decisions are bound by the Code of Civil Procedure 1908. How many of the statements given above is or are correct? Only one, only two, all three or none? The correct answer is option A, only one. Recently, the NGT orders penalty for two plastic recycling units running without approval. The NGT is a specialized body set up under the National Green Tribunal Act for environmental protection and conservation of forest and other natural resources. Hence, statement 1 is correct. India became the third country in the world to set up a specialized environmental tribunal. The tribunal comprises of the chairperson, the judicial members and expert members. The chairperson is appointed by the central government in consultation with the Chief Justice of India. Hence, statement 2 is not correct. The tribunal is guided by principles of natural justice. It is not bound by procedure under the Code of Civil Procedure 1908 and the Indian Evidence Act 1872. Hence, statement 3 is not correct. Therefore, option A is the correct answer. Next question is recently the term trouble was in the news. It is related to long-range revolver, invasive bird species, Indian Space Telescope or anti-ship missile. The correct answer is option A, long-range revolver. Recently, India's debut long-range revolver Prabal is poised to launch soon. It is manufactured by the state-owned enterprise Advanced Weapons and Equipment India based in Kanpur. The Prabal revolver chambered in 0 0.32 bore exhibits an impressive firing capability that extends to a range of 50 meters. 
It is light in weight and equipped with a side swing cylinder. Weighing merely 700 grams, excluding cartridges, it boasts a barrel length of 76 mm and an overall length of 177.6 mm. Therefore, option A is the correct answer. Next question is consider the following statements regarding the Nav Rose. 1. It is a Parsi New Year. 2. It is celebrated on the first day of the spring equinox in the Iran and the Middle East. 3. Parsis in India celebrate the new year by referring to the Shahanshah calendar. How many of the statements given above is or are correct? Only one, only two, all three or none. The correct answer is option C, all three. Recently, Parsi New Year Navroz was in the news. The Parsi New Year, also known as Navroz, translates to a new day. Hence, statement one is correct. The Parsis follow one of the world's oldest monotheistic religions, Zoroastrianism. In Iran and the Middle East, they celebrate the new year using the Fasli Bastnai calendar, which sets the first day of the spring equinox around March 21st. Hence, statement 2 is correct. The Parsis in India celebrate the new year by referring to the Shahanshah calendar, which does not account for the leap year, implying that the day has moved by 200 days from the original day of the spring equinox, which falls today, August 16 this year. Hence, statement 3 is correct. Therefore, option C is the correct answer. Next question is consider the following statements regarding the pink bowl worm. 1. It is native to Asia. 2. Its scientific name is Pectinophora gossipilla. 3. It is known for mostly attacking corn crop. How many of the statements given above is or are correct? Only one, only two, all three or none. The correct answer is option B, only two. Recently, the pink ball worm has been in news for attacking the crops in North India. It is native to Asia but has now become an invasive species in most of the world's cotton growing regions. Hence, statement 1 is correct. Its scientific name is Pectinophora gossipilla. Hence, statement 2 is correct. It is known for the attack on cotton crops. It is a pest in cotton farming. Hence, statement 3 is not correct. During this attack on crop, the female moths lays eggs in cotton balls with emerging larvae causing harm through feeding. Therefore, option B is the correct answer. Last question is consider the following statements regarding microplastic. 1. They are tiny chunks of plastic. 2. They encompass organisms that consume plastic. 3. They can infiltrate the human body. How many of the statements given above is or are correct? Only one, only two, all three or none. The correct answer is option B, only two. Recently, the scientists detected microplastics in human hearts. The microplastics are described as minuscule plastic fragments measuring less than 5 mm in length. Hence, statement 1 is correct. Microplastics are plastic particles itself and not an organism. Hence, statement 2 is not correct. They can enter the human body through mouth, nose and other body cavities. Hence, statement 3 is correct. Microplastics larger than 150 micrometers are not likely to be absorbed by the human body, but the chance of absorbing very small microplastic particles, including nano-sized plastics, are higher. A study conducted by the World Wide Fund for Nature revealed that an average person consumed 5 grams of plastic. Therefore, option B is the correct answer. Now it's time for the practice question. Recently, the term Lagrangian or Lagrange point 1 was in the news. It is related to it is point in the orbital plane of the Earth's Sun system. It is name of one of the deepest points in Pacific Ocean. It is one of the seven steepest points on K2 peak or it is a type of newly discovered subatomic particle. Send the answer of this question in the comment section. Stay tuned for the next episode. Thanks for watching.